Kimberly Brock Brown, I'm so glad to see you in, uh, well, in real life virtually rather than, rather than via LinkedIn where we've been talking for a long time. That's true. That's true. Nice to meet you. Likewise. And you are going to be the new president of the American Culinary Federation, right? Yes, sir. When, when does that happen? Our national convention, the last night, we all get sworn in, so August 5th. That's soon. And you, you are the first woman and the first black person to be president of the ACF. 92 no, years. How many? 92. 92 years. And there's been one person of color, right? Michael Tai. Well, you can count Stafford as well. Yes, he's Hawaiian. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sure. Uh, so that's, that's great. It is. Um, it is. I'm happy. And you've, you've kind of been trying to do this for a while, right? Like how, how long have you been kind of aiming to, uh, to well, become see, the person? I, I have never aimed for it. I, I just, okay. If you could have told me five years ago this has happened, I'd, I'd have laughed and called you a lie. It just was never on my radar to do that. Um, it was just, I was just tired of not seeing representation as, as a female, as a person of color, as a pastry chef um, on the national board. I just thought that more could be done for pastry people for, and for women, period. And, and so I just got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And as I've mentored and, and coached and talked to other people, and we have an opportunity you know, to step forward and make sure you have to see at the table, to be every little you can think of to say, you know, I, I think I said to somebody, wanted, and then when, when it came down to it, it's like, well, just put up a shut up. <laughs> you know, all this time you've been preaching to people about what they should do, you know, and how we don't take advantage of opportunities when, when they're there. And so when we were at the Phoenix, our Phoenix convention, um, I just like, this is enough. You know, there finally was a women's task force. I'm like, what, what are you all doing? I don't, I don't understand what the, what the purpose of this is. You know, you, you want to still, you know, present to the national board. Now it'll be another year down the road. But meanwhile, you know, seven white guys got up and nominated seven more white guys for national board. And you guys still talking about it and not doing anything proactively, you know, I felt. So um, that's what started it for me to become vice president of the Southeast. The, and that was the Phoenix conference. How long ago was that? Uh, five years, five years ago. This well, year. Considering how the American Culinary Federation normally moves, that's fast because it is not like <laughs> it's not a fast moving organization. Are you also the first pastry chef to become president? Yes. Yes. That's exciting. I think so. I've, I've gotten some, um, some, some really good pastry people and organizations who are l looking to partner up and do some things. So, you know, we're going to make that next convention speech. Yeah, I remember going to an ACF convention, a national convention years ago, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, when there was kind of a crisis in the pastry chef world that, that restaurants were cutting their budgets and couldn't afford pastry chefs. And I was really kind of heartened by what the pastry chef said, which was, wasn't you need to save our jobs. It was, if you're going to not have pastry chefs, please learn how to do pastry so that the art is maintained. And that was just a, such a selfless, nice approach that you don't always... I agree. I agree. I mean... Yeah, and it's sad. A lot of people, to me, are short-sighted when they cut that bacon and pastry program. Because um, I, I know, and when I've been in, in hotels, my professional life mostly, and, and it's and it's it's been the pastry shop that saved like that dining experience by giving them that free dessert or that specialty cake, whatever, or sending amenities to the room when the front desk screwed up. I mean, you know, it's it's been you, you give something, and and you know, it's just been a good way to, in addition to your regular duties add a little something something extra to the experience that that person is having so you don't get point. that if you don't have a person to do it that's that's a good point and it's also such a great profit center i mean you make Definitely. so much money on pastries and i i love it when i'm in a restaurant and i see that so, the restaurant's trying to impress somebody and they just bury them in in pastry they just bring out all the desserts and put it on the table that's it that's it it's not about putting more slabs of prime rib and you know, shrimp at too well it's not that's not it it's, it's no the, it's the bread basket. I want to see what's in that bread basket, and I want to see what the desserts look like. I don't know, for a while, a couple of restaurants, it was so popular when brulee would really just really hit it. Everybody just had to have brulee, brulee, brulee. And so for a while, one of the restaurants just gave a little bitty, a moose boost kind of thing, you know, a, a brulee. Just get this out the way, have your little thing, then order dessert, right? You know, and, and it was working. So they got their little taste out the way, but who didn't love, who didn't love brulee back then, basically? 
but you also got to eat your cheesecake or other thing that the pastry chef had done. Right? So, so you kind of whet their appetite, but yeah. not, not quite enough that they don't still want dessert, right? Right, right, right. Oh, that's fun. So they, and then, you know, they think, oh, I love creme brulee. I better have creme brulee. Meanwhile, yeah. you have all this, which, and creme brulee, not easy to make, but once you know how to make it, it's not hard. You know, just don't burn the custard. You're in good shape. Don't overcook it. <laughs> and, and don't make it raw. <laughs> no, no. Cook it. Cook yeah. your custard. Um, so what is on your agenda as the president? What are you going to do? You know, and, and, and it's interesting. I mean, I have learned from being on the board for the past almost four years mm -hmm. as vice president that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a democracy. It really, truly is. And so the other votes really have to count. So I think my, my, my main goal that I want to get across is how we better connect and, and bring forward our students. You know, the, we got to make sure that next generation of culinarians, of cooks, of chefs, I mean, had the same advantages and opportunities that we have had utilizing ACF and, and the full power ACF has for a lot of entities or for especially in my career. So how I can better engage um, culinarians in schools, I, I, want, I want to make it a mandate. I want to make it a bylaw. I mean, we do things by bylaws. It's, it's federation. Right. Right? It's bylaw. I got, I'm got. i going to hit those bylaws hard this year is really what I want to do. And so I want to make it a bylaw that the, our board of governors, which is every chapter president, and plus the board of directors that we mentor definitely you know if you got if you're sitting down you should have a student sitting there with you you know so at every chapter meeting every chapter event that student is getting the information is getting to know the school is getting to be mentored you know on everything and you get into that network and you, you, you're making a kinship a friendship of everything um for that student so i mean i remember as a culinary student i was scared to death of those older chefs you know with the big white totes on and i didn't want to have anything to do with them but i missed an opportunity you know, to pick their brains and to be a part of that, you know, and to see and know what they knew, know what they knew, you know. And so, if you if you could eliminate some of that and have one person, at least one person, you know, because you don't want to kill anybody with, with the thing, but to have somebody to pass that information to, to pair it with, to see them, and then have them go back to their school or to their classes and talk about it and then be inclusive and get everybody else excited about it. Too. I think that's a win win. That's a good idea. And and is there is there a diversity component to that? Like you know, we have to have a wide variety of people from different backgrounds or does that no, I, mean, I, I don't think so i think just as far as the student part that part goes i think uh -huh. you know i have been an adjunct teacher and so i i know that in my classrooms it's always been majority of women you know and so i, I think it'll, it'll play itself out wherever that goes but i do want to see more in diversity and inclusiveness in, in our in our awards and in our other committees um you know who, who gets to be the head of this committee um, I, I'm looking for fresh faces. I, I, don't, I don't want the same old, same old. I, I want, because, you know, we, we, we can't always just recycle the same person doing the same thing or just rotate the table, you know, okay, you're going to be a this year. The next term, you're going to be, you know, I, just, I don't want that anymore. And, and also, I want, like I said, to bring up other, that next step, that next tier of people to get them in position, you know, while these other people are still around to, to impart that knowledge and to train them properly and, and you know, and give them the ins and outs of what's going on. So, you know, so Mm -hmm. So it's about mixing up the people and rather than on, on the various boards and committees rather than rotating them around, which, which is something Definitely. the ACF has done in the past. Yes, 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 yes. Well, and it does seem like, I guess I was at the last ACF conference, the last one I went to was a few years ago, and it seemed, you know, still a lot of white men, but it was, it was more diverse than it had been in, in the past. Is that, was my perception right? Has there been more uh, yeah, you're, variety? Yeah, you're right on target. I mean... When we, when we went to a combined, especially for our regionals, with the combined Southeast, Northeast, and Central and West, and then I got to see more people, more women, more people of color in the Northeast, because I never, you know, you never see, everybody usually would pick one or, or, or the other. Very rare right. to go to two, right? right. So, I, you know, people who didn't go to the national would go to the, to, to the regional. I go, oh my God, how you doing? You know, and, and you did see more people, whatever. So it was a great opportunity to see more people who like me, or more patient people, or more, just more younger professionals, that you can actually talk to and get, get to know and network with. And it was just, it was beautiful. You know, so I, I, I want to see more of that. I want to facilitate more of that. Uh, so more, just more people mixing with one another. Yeah. Uh, There's too many times I've walked down the hallway or someone else has, has come to me. I was sitting at this table and it was a, it was a network session with the senior retired chef and, and the students. And she was African American and, and, and everybody was engaged, but he didn't engage her and she didn't engage him either. 
And I asked her about that. And I said, well, why didn't you ask a question? Or why didn't you say, excuse me, but I, you know, something to put yourself into the conversation. And she couldn't answer it. She was just, you know, that fear. And she just felt so slighted. And so she's sitting here, you know, crying at this point in time. And, and I, I'm making her realize the opportunity that you just missed because you sat there. You need to express yourself and put yourself out there. If they don't talk to you, shame on them. But you didn't talk to them either, shame on you. You know, so it goes both ways. You just, I understand you're the student and that's the chef. But it comes a point in time, you're both adults, <laughs> you know, and you got to put, you know, you lost the opportunity. He's not losing anything, you know, so if you want it, you got to really put yourself out there. And that's what I've learned in these really hard in these past four years as VP and now running for president, because I didn't even know you had to be on the national board to become, to even run the national president. See, I, I was foolish, because this was not on my horizon things to do. Oh, you figured it out. And, and so you've obviously learned how to put yourself forward to, to ask questions, to engage with people. Where did you learn that? Uh, where did I learn? Well, I, I, I've been around a lot of strong women in my life growing up. Uh, my mom is one of them. Um, she graduated college at 50 with four kids raising them. You know, mostly as a single parent, my parents divorced when I was younger. Um, the church I went to was ran by female ministers. Um, I just had a lot of female, female mentors, and I'll say that now, but I could not have said that word back in the day because that just was not something I've had um, spoken to me about when I was younger. But I've had a lot of female positive influences in my life growing up and, and now, you know, so uh, I, just, I just have never, and, and, and I think also playing sports, you know, and being around that has a lot to do with your mentality and what you're going to do, what you're not going to do. I do believe, you know, that team sport, that team spirit, and, and just, that go get it kind of thing, you know, like, okay, I got to win this, we got to go, you know, and that drive. You know, if, I, if I want something, you know, I think I'm good enough or I try to be good enough to go and get it. And if I don't, then I figure out what I need to do to make it better for the next time and then try again. That's great. Do, do you think maybe more pastry chefs could, could do that also? Because often pastry is so segregated from the rest of the kitchen. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't even know what that would look like, but, you know, are, are pastry chefs getting more involved in the savory kitchen? I don't know. I think so. I mean, I, you know, I've always said when I, whenever I saw a TV or a competition, whatever, and the, and the person had a bacon pastry background, and I said I would put my money if I was going to bet on that person because the, the thinking and process in bacon and pastry is so different than the savory side of the kitchen. And so if that person is now doing something that's savory, oh my God, you know, it's, it's going to be different because the thought process, how you put something together, is totally different. Whereas on nine out of ten times, the savory side, you know, just kind of throwing things together and you know. But it's more precise and scientific based in the bacon and pastry shop. You know, so I've always had thought that when I, I see a bacon and pastry person go savory, that's a, that's, that's, that's a whole different edge, a whole different sword right there. Yeah, they know how to be consistent. That's, yeah. I mean, even more so than savory cooks, pastry chefs know exactly how to make something be the way it's supposed to be. I think so. I think so. Well, Kimberly Brock Brown, congratulations. I'm Thank very you. excited for you and for the American Culinary Federation. And uh, how long is your terms? It's two year terms. Two years. So have a great couple of years and, uh, <laughs> and stay in touch. <laughs>